Hello YouTube, Nerdwave here, and today we're going to be taking a quick look at another retro console, the Sumo Sys. Now I've owned it for about two years, originally purchased in early March of 2019 for $149.99. So it's a bit pricier than the Mini G-Box, but was it worth it? Let's take a look. Now before we jump into things, I'd like to point out that this console doesn't appear to be on sale any longer. The website no longer functions, and I can't find an active listing on Amazon or eBay. So if you're looking for one for yourself, best of luck. Now I did receive an email from the company back in late March of 2019 stating that the system would no longer come preloaded with games, likely for legal reasons, but with the price drop to $89.99. The downside is, is you'd have to upload the ROMs manually. Now the console is a bit smaller than the Mini G-Box. It does have your standard power, HDMI output, aux, microSD, but it's got four USB ports and even an Ethernet port. This particular model has the classic NES decals on it, but I've seen another version that gives you the option of applying the Sega Genesis and even Atari 2600 decals instead. The controller is like an SNES clone. It's comfortable and feels lightweight, but still solid. These controllers are rechargeable, there's no batteries, and according to the manufacturer, it takes about two hours to charge to maximum for a playtime of about 40 hours. Now the interface is really nice and easy to navigate. The menus are separated by system and then the games alphabetically so it makes finding a title really easy even if you're just browsing. There's even some nice retro inspired music playing in the background while you search. There's a great selection of titles here from numerous consoles including the NES, Game Boy, Genesis, arcade games, even the PlayStation and N64. You can favorite games in the section here and even take screenshots. Let's go jump in and play a game to see how it looks. Okay, so I've got some games here under favorites, so, um, let's see. Ah, what a classic. Wizards and Warriors. I did own this cartridge back in the day. Don't think I've ever actually beaten this though, so I think I have an excuse now to play through the whole game. It's a fun game, pretty challenging, really nice soundtrack. So let's see here. Controls feel good. Responsive, not too much lag, or at least not something too, too noticeable. If I recall, you have to run around collecting gems, and you get keys for treasure chests, and there's like... You can upgrade your gear, and you know, it's it's a pretty fun little game. You know, I don't I don't see a lot of people talking about this. Maybe we'll do a video on... Um, on this later on, but a pretty fun NES title. You know, even though not terribly popular. But yeah, it passes the test. Controllers are good. Feels lightweight enough. Uh, but it can still withstand some abuse. And now I want to keep playing. That's a problem. <laughs> Maybe we'll come back to this a little later. Overall, this is a really nice console for the money. It hardly takes up any space. It's very easy to set up and use, and can appeal to both the casual and hardcore gamers alike. Ideally, I would like a controller with thumbsticks for certain titles in the library. All in all, I find this to be a much better value than the Mini G-Box. If you can get your hands on one, I'd pick it up. 
Thank you for staying to the end. If you enjoy the content, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on a future episode. And I'm looking forward to catching you all in the next one. Later days.